Welcome to CPM Algebra Connection section 1.1.1. Most likely this is your first or second day in class and uh, could be an exciting day for you. The big idea in this section is they want you to start thinking about interpreting graphs. What graphs and two variables mean. I'm also going to review diamond problems which will be a new thing for some of you who have not used this series of textbooks and area and perimeter problems. When we look at a two variable graph, we'll usually have an x and a y axis. Remember that your x axis is usually your horizontal and your y is your vertical axis. And usually we think of if I have this x, what y do I get with it? Now, on this particular graph, we've got a bunch of data that we've graphed. I'm going to say that uh, we're going to do age as our input variable and height as our output variable. When I do age and height, as I've shown you here, what does this trend tell me? I look at this data, it's not a lot of it here or here. Most of it's all kind of clustered right here. It's pretty close together. And it looks like it's going up this way. When you interpret a graph, you can say something like as as the x does whatever it does the blank or the y does what it does. In this case what we would say is as the age. Remember this is going to be small numbers for example zero is going to be here and this is going to be a large number as far as the height this is going to be zero and this is going to be a large number so each graph or data point tells us two things. It tells us both an age, in this case a large number would be older and younger. Even if I don't have any numbers on there, I still can kind of get a trend of what's happening here. This is saying, as I get older, my height will get taller. Okay, let's look at what some individual data might, might mean. This purple point right up here has two quantities associated with it an age and a height what do you know about the age of this person well if I look on this scale they're kind of in line with this side so this is going to be a young person and they're going to be very a large number for height which is tall so this is a young and tall person they don't fit the the main part of the data but that's what that point would represent. Okay, this one over here in this corner, let's look at what we know about their age. Well, their age is over here. So this is an older person. And what do we know about their height? Their height is down here toward the bottom of the height scale. So they must be a short. Once again, they don't fit, um, they don't fit the data in general, but they are valid points. This is the point that actually fits that pattern. And that point um, would be a person, let's look at the age. What do we know about their age? They're going to be older and they're going to be taller. So anytime I have a graph, there's several things I look at. I look at what is happening on the X, what's happening on the Y, what's the trend of the data, if there is one, um, and that was as the age, as a person gets older, as the age gets larger, the height gets taller. And then there's specific points where we can talk about what they represent. Here's a graph that I'm going to use the same basic graph as we had before, and I'm still going to use age and height but I just want you to realize that sometimes the graphs they give you may not match with what you know in reality. This graph would say what? Well, these are young, these are old, these are short, these are tall, and this would say, look at this data, it's kind of trending down, and it would say something like, as a person gets older, usually always 
going this way, as a person gets older, what does this tell us about the height? It says that the heights are going down. And so um, these data points still mean the same thing that they did before, but the trend would now say that it's going down. Now, with that in mind, you were asked, or will be asked, depending on when you're watching this video, when you come to class, you're going to get one of the segments of a four-part graph. And you'll have to find the other people in your group that, uh, that match. The lines will connect, so if you find somebody that doesn't connect with your end point and your beginning point, then you know they're not part of your graph. Um, you're going to ask to explain some things, but you're going to ask to write a story. So let's let's go back to what we said um, before. Since we're getting to make this up, let's put something here, and I'm going to put this is the um, month. And this is going to be price of gas. Just made those up because I'm thinking about gas right now. And um, okay, so what is this telling us? Let's look at this first piece of this graph and let's look at the trend on it. It's going up, and let's think of our numbers. This would be earlier months of the year and later months. Maybe I'll say this is like January and this is like December so this is later on in the year so as I'm starting out early in the year the gas prices start here at zero and then they go up okay so for maybe the first quarter of the year we'll call this the prices are going up so as the as the year goes on the prices went up then what did they do in the second quarter the prices kind of leveled off they stopped and they didn't get any tall higher and then they actually started to drop. So on my paper, I would have my graph put together, but I would say in the first quarter the prices were going up, then the next quarter during those months the price were stable and flat, and then they went down, then they were kind of stable again, then they kind of went down. That's the kind of idea of what they want you to do. They want you to get an idea of those two things we talked about before. As this does something, as the number of months pass by, the price of gas did what? Okay, so that's for your lesson in class. They're going to introduce these kind of problems to you. These are called diamond problems. You'll see them on your homework, probably not in class. But it's just a shortcut way of finding two numbers that have two things in common. One is what they multiply to, or their product, and one is their sum. So here's an example of how that might work. This is actually, I think, pretty close to one of your first ones in your homework. So, if I'm looking for what they multiply to up here, and what they add to, I'm going to take these two numbers, those are the ones I'm considering, 3 times 4 is 12, so the product is 12, and 3 plus 4 is 7. This is an exercise that you're really going to use what you've learned here, and probably I think it's like chapter 7 or 8 of the book. It's way towards the end of the year, middle end of the year. Okay, so here's the same kind of thing, but this time they've given us two different two different numbers than we had before. So I'm... So we know that these two numbers right here have to multiply to 12. Well, what two numbers multiply to 12? 3 times 4. What two nut? What do three times four or three and four add to? Seven. So all these are going to be the same problem, just so you can see how this works. Okay. Um, three plus what is seven? Because remember, this is the one where we're adding. Three plus what is seven? Three plus four, and this is going to be three times four, which is twelve. This is the hardest. What two numbers multiply to 12 and add to 7? Well, the numbers that multiply to 12 are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, and I believe that's all of them. And I look here and I go, well, those aren't going to add to 7. Those won't add to 7, but these will. Later on, you'll have positive and negative numbers. Now, as far as area goes, I'm going to point you to your um, methods and meaning box that you're going to have as part of this unit. Remember that perimeter is the measurement of adding up all the outsides, and area 
is usually multiplying the length times the width and finding the number of square units that will fit into the shape. Good luck!